Question yep. one. We are talking offense tonight. We're talking star running back in a pro style offense. Um, so question one is what does a star running back look like? Different than some of your other offenses. Uh, and so that's why we 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 delineate this into pro style. To me, you know, the eye tailback is Herschel Walker. He is the the guys. Remember the Marcus Dupree 30 for 30, like and seeing all the high school clips of Marcus Dupree. I don't really want to talk about it. I to know. Be but like Boom that's an eye tailback. And like he doesn't, he's not common. Right. And you know, the funny thing is at the time, everybody at the, at that time in the 80s, everybody was running the eye because the best teams were running the eye, right? Well, the best teams had the best guy. And then the rest of us are out there. Well, I wasn't out there, but I played on an eye team. And our running backs were good. But they would have been much better suited to the pro style. Uh, they would have been much better suited to maybe a wing T wing back, or our fullback would have been really well suited to a wing T fullback um, who carries the ball more. And, it, and you know, there's it's, it's it's interesting when you look at those things. And um, the pro style back is a little bit more. Um, uh multiple uh he's able you know an, an ideal pro style back in a most of us will end up rotating when we talk pro style we're talking one back um we're talking nfl style i mean it's legitimately pro style it's what you see you know we see a little bit more spread type stuff in the nfl now but for the most part the nfl is pretty generic and it's what you're seeing in the nfl every single week you've got an h back you've got a tight end um you've got a you've got a one back you know, behind the quarterback, you know, or next to the quarterback and gone too. Um, but mostly, you know, we run under center or pistol when we talk pro style primarily. Uh, and, you know, an H back rather than an I back type of thing. And he's able to get, he's able to pass pro, right? We didn't ask the I tail back to pass pro because he's carried the ball 48 times. The <laughs> only time that break. we threw the ball was when he was faking running it. And that was his pass pro. He wasn't sitting there and he, you know, uh, uh, we don't ask, uh, we, we don't ask him to do that, but we're going to be in a pro style offense, usually relatively balanced. Sometimes it's more play action. Sometimes it's more, but in general, we like to be dropped back, even if it's just quick game, which means he's got to be able to pass pro a little bit. And we also want to be able to release and get into a route because we depend on, this is the things we teach in the pistol power offense system. If you want to know how the, the, the passing system works, we depend on getting five receivers out and do a route unless you blitz somebody. And that's why we have two check releases. If you don't blitz anybody, if you rush four, we're getting five out. And the way that that breaks down is if you're in a zone coverage, we're going to have somebody open. And if you're a man coverage, we're going to beat somebody. Um, and so he's got to be a threat to catch the ball. He's got to be a threat. He's got to be a decent blocker, whether you slide protect or or half slide or bob or anything. Um, he's got to be able to pass pro. All of this is, again, like we talked about before, this is built into our system. I formation is not the same. Can I line up in an I formation? Absolutely. It's a package. It's not the offense. It's just a formation. When we talk the, the, the pro-I formation, the pro-I offense, it's entirely different because that's a feature back. We're talking about a back who may carry the ball 20 times as opposed to the I back carrying it 35 or 40. Right. He may carry it 20. He may catch it five. Um, and he's going to be in pass pro, and he's going to be – he may be blocking – for an H back play, he may be faking on a play action. There's, there's, uh, he is a more. Not to say that the that the that the guy at the tailback is is um you know in an I formation. I know nobody runs I formation. But I'm using this as an example because this is what people think of as a running back oftentimes, 
the, the bell cow star going to carry it 60 times. That's not the guy we're looking for. If you have that guy, that's great. And, you know, maybe he does carry it 40 times, but in general, we like to spread the ball around more than that. Um, but it's built into the system that, that we have a guy and quite honestly, the H back is, you know, the H back in our system is a guy who could probably be the running back, but he's a little bit better blocker, a little bit better pass catcher, you know, in an ideal world, right? The running back is a little bit better ball carrier, not as good a blocker, not as good a pass catcher. Like that's kind of how it weighs out. Um, and the why is, you know, a better pass catcher and a better blocker and not a running back type kid. Um, that's, that's how they just, that's how they pan out. But the reality is all three of them are kind of doing the same things a lot of times. Um, so that's, he's a little less selfish. Uh, well, it's not that he's less selfish it's that he needs to be less selfish. Again, the offense, the eye, offense the, the I, you know, the eye tailback carrying it 40 times a game. He's not necessarily selfish. He's doing, you know, he's, he's taking a beating to win the game, but our guy is not going to do that. The ball is going to be distributed more. Um, in that way, he's more similar to a wing T back where we have three backs in the backfield and the ball is being distributed around more. But, uh, you know, in general, a lot of times with the wing T, you have two more H backy receiving threat guys lined up at the wings. Um, you can have that offset back be more of the, of the feature running back, but often the fullback is the bigger guy. And, you know, uh, and, and so he's somewhere in between that I, I'd almost a, a good, a good comparison, a good way to think of it would be the, the ideal third down back in the NFL. I uh, mean, uh, you know, it's a ways back. So people may not remember, but Thurman Thomas would be a great, a great example of that guy um, going back further. And, and then there's some, I mean, there's obviously others, but like, that's the guy that just pops out in my head is like, yeah, that's the dude. Um, the dude that could do it all legitimately. Um, so when I start thinking of running backs, uh, I, I kind of start doing the division. Like, are they a one cut back? Are they kind of the scat back type? Uh, I mean, a star running back can look like any of those. Mm -hmm. In this offense, does it really lean more to the one cut? I mean, we're we're trying to run power, we're trying to run some counter, uh, a little bit of zone. Like, I kind of need you to be able to read, have vision, put a foot in the ground and go, right? We're really looking for that cutback guy. The jitterbug, the the scat back, like... He doesn't fit. You you may not, because you're going to get one chance. A, he's more likely to be a Z who catches jet sweeps and rocket tosses and stuff and right. does, does shiny things in this yeah. system. Um, or he can sub in for the H-back in certain situations. The best... Rs that we've had, the best running backs we've had are exactly what you said. And the good ones are going to just pound it in there, one cut, and they don't have the acceleration. They're going to get four to eight yards. The great ones run the exact same way, but when they put in a foot in the ground, they find another gear. And they're the kids that can can see it, read it, put a foot in the ground, and I mean, you know, like I said, one cut, but then but then all of a sudden after that cut, they're faster than everybody else. Yeah. Um, and that's a really important distinction, I think. Uh, you're absolutely right. Um, so let's talk about the role. And you kind of just covered a bunch of this. But what if I'm going like to run... just keep talking until we've exhausted the entire episode in 15 that, minutes. That's generally what we try to do, right? Yeah. Um, and then talk about, you know, how to be a teacher and retire. Um, what, what is the role of... <laughs> Of the running back in the pro style offense. We talk about what the guy looks like. Where does he fit in the actual offense? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's we kind of touched on it already. And, and it's rare that we just have one guy. There's almost always a couple guys playing in there. And, you know, and for, for various reasons, you know, uh, the guy that can run the ball best may not be the best pass pro. He may not be the best receiver. And that's why the, when we talk to the star, the stud, I don't take him out on third down because I want him releasing into a route. Um, and that's that's where I think it's different than uh, 
you know, most wing tees, obviously the passing is not as big a deal. Uh, in the spread, he's he's probably a little bit we're, – we're more similar to what you'd want out of a good spread running back, especially if it's like a zone read type thing. You know, you want that running back to pound it and let the quarterback be the guy that, you know, uh, makes makes the the moves and stuff is generally how we've, we've done that. Um, and he's got to be able to pass pro in the spread or he's got to be able to release and be a receiving threat so he can get five outdoor route and an air raid, um, you know, for sure. So it's probably more similar to that in his role, but he has a higher, he has a, a bigger role in the run game, I think, than, and maybe in the play action game as well. Um, so, you know, I, I think that there's, he's got to be that, that running back we just talked about, be able to run inside zone, outside zone, power counter. Uh, you know, if he can run toss too, that's great. A lot of times we have a, we have a different guy, you know, we'll take that scat guy and he'll run the toss. Um, very rarely, is the toss guy and the inside zone guy the same guy? Right. Um, and I I think we might have one this year that is, and it's but it's rare. Is it because um, he's so good, or the others just can't beat him out of either of those spots? He's a he's the I will say that he is the body of the scat guy. And the mentality and physicality of the one cut pounded guy. Yeah, gotcha. Um, but he's the body of the scat guy, so he's not going to be a thirty carry guy up the middle, right? He'd be great at it if we could promise that he he'd hold up. But he's not. He's not the two hundred. He's not the. He's not the five nine two hundred five. He's not the. He's not the one by one Lego. I mean, you know, he, it's, it's not, we've got, <laughs> <laughs> we went to Legos for descriptions. Yeah. Oh so, my goodness. Containers, so he, Legos. He's not a square. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, you, that, that's, that's where you've got to, but that's where he might not have a place in a pro eye, right? I mean, he could be the toss guy to pro eye. But realistically, he's probably the Z, right? Go out there and block somebody when we run toss. Um, you know, and again, without subbing guys in and out. And I don't know, you know, we we played one scrimmage. I don't know what it's gonna look like, but uh, but he's he's a third year starter, so uh, not a running back, but he's a third year starter on on defense. Um, it's gonna be interesting interesting to see how that works out. And we have some other good running backs too. We won't be just be relying on him. That's the way it's always been for us. Uh, multiple people will carry the ball in multiple situations. But he's got to be a guy that can run the inside. The, the main guy, the star guy, has got to be a guy that can run the inside runs. That's, you know, power counter, inside zone, and outside zone. Best one I ever had. He was the region, you know, all-region all running back. Um, first team all-region, and that was on a team that threw the crap out of the ball, so he was good. When he got the ball, he did something with it. He could read inside zone and hit the cutback. He could read outside zone and, and cut it into C gap. He rare, very rarely took those outside. He could run power and he could run counter. Uh, he did not run truck toss. He did not run the toss. Like he just didn't. He did. He just didn't. Um, it, and it may, you know, part of that may have been we didn't need to. But um, he was he was a much better pass protector. Then he was a passing threat. I've had others that were better passing threats um, to actually receiving the ball, uh, but he could pass pro. Uh, I think they have to be good. In the ideal world, he can pass pro and catch. And, you know, how often is that? But I will tell you what we need him to do. We talk about being selfless. Better carry out his fakes. Because we are heavy play action. And when we ask you to fake... Everybody in the world better think you have the football. You're not getting I, – I, I've told them, you know, I will tell them over and over again, and I will argue this. I will argue those people on my staff. I will argue with people in JDFB who are running the pistol power offense system. Well, what route does he run? If he's thinking about running a route, he's not thinking about that fake. He buries that fake. He comes over like he's got the football, and he runs just hard as he would with the football. And – if you can get one guy to tackle you, great. If you can get two to tackle you, even better. If you can get five to tackle you, perfect, because now we can probably complete to anybody. 
uh you know get the corner to step because like ideally we want the corner to step up right now we got the big throw um i wanted to be extremely unselfish in that last question i was trying to think of something i could input on that but i mean it's the role of a running back in an offense so you know I it is but you, again our guy has to be because it is more of a balanced offense um he has to be, you know, the star has to be the guy that can do all of these things. I was going to ask about screen plays. We talked about receiving out a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Are you using a lot of screens in that pro style offense? To and and is he the same guy? Are we using that fake to draw them in and then kind of hit it right behind them with the same cat? Or is this more your toss guy? I wouldn't do that, but I will run screen plays where he's stepping up the pass pro and then he just kind of slips behind the rushers. Right. And runs gotcha. the middle screen. I've never been, this is a fault of me, not a fault of the play. So I'll be, be very clear about that. I've never been a good middle screen coach. I can count the number of middle screens that we've run on one hand, probably. Um, and, and some of them have been successful. Uh, but I've just never, there's a lot of traffic up there. Uh, I've just never trusted high school kids to do the things that I want them to do. Uh, I don't like not protecting my quarterback. We throw a lot of alley screens, but an alley screen is a quicker screen. An alley screen is a thousand one, a middle screen is a thousand one, thousand two release. Um, a now screen, a look throw is an, is an now, you know, so there's a, a bill breaks them down and into, into now screens, one counts and two counts. I've never been good at two counts. I've been better at slip screens with the, the, the you know, a slot coming into the middle screen rather than the running back doing it. And then we flare the running back the other way. Uh, I have never liked running back flares because the Mike linebacker is tracking that dude on a flare the whole way. Uh, and I've seen so many times where that guy catches the football, arms up, and a Mike linebacker is barreling down on him. Now, as you know, I watch a lot of football film, a lot of high school football film. I see a lot of teams executing both of these plays very well. Yeah. So I can only surmise I am not very good at coaching them or I have not tried very hard, right. uh, which is which is the, the truth lay in the second one more than the first one. Uh, you know, didn't work great. All right, move on. Screw it. Um, I just don't love the plays. So right. I will get him involved in, in other ways, which you can talk about in the next segment, um, get him involved in the passing game. But screens to the R have never been great for me. Gotcha. All right, so last part here. Um, how can we call an offense to feature that star running back? So what are we – and our weekly game plan, our, you know, I mean, we, we've talked about all the ways that we decide how to run plays. And if you haven't, then you need to go over to the Offensive Play Caller Series whenever it opens up next time. And, you know, you need to purchase that and figure your life out. But how can we call that offense where that star running back is got the appropriate amount of carries, but they're all maximized on potential and then touches overall the same thing? The first thing you need to do is you need to have somebody who is paying, because, again, he's probably not, taking every single snap um and for a lot of us he's starting somewhere else right he's a starting linebacker he's a starting safety right. um because so we don't good. want him in there for 60 <laughs> snaps of offense uh and i'm not a big so when i say 60 snaps i'm not a big no huddle guy uh hurry up no huddle guy we we huddle we take our time um i don't care my head coach is very big on time of possession i don't care about that i just want to get it right I'm I'm not concerned about how long we hold the ball. In certain games, I am. If we know that they're four touchdowns better, if we can hold the ball long enough so that we get into the fourth quarter and we're within a touchdown, it's like okay, now we got a shot. Now there's a but but in 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 general, I don't care about time of possession, uh, but I care about let's get it right. I want to give my offensive line time to communicate uh you know at the line of scrimmage and make all their calls and everything and and i want to be able to look at the i want to be able to run motions i want to be able to look at the look at what we got pre-snap and make our reads for passes and everything um so 60 snaps let's say so you're always going to break this down and i think this is what people lose when we start talking 
game plan. Um, if I break down an offense and I go, okay, we have 13 run plays. We have nine drop back pass plays. We have three sprint outs. We have five play actions. Like, And that's not uncommon. Okay. That's what? 22 plus, uh, you know, five, whatever, 20, 28, 20. Let's, thir- let's just say it's 30 plays. I put on some screen plays. Now I got your offensive package screens. that you I got to draw. I got 35 plays on the call sheet, not plays being run from formations. I've got 35 different plays. That's not uncommon. Right. At all. It's uncommon for me, but it's not uncommon at all. Um, there's only going to be 60 snaps. So either every single one of those plays is getting called twice or some of them are getting called once and some are getting called three times. But more likely, one of those is getting called 15 times, 20 times. And half of those are not getting called. So don't put them in. When you When you think about a game plan, Think about I've got 60 snaps. Don't think about here's everything that I could possibly use. Because the the worst thing that you can do is put in a play and work on it and rep it and teach it and and invest even 10 minutes of time. And and if you put in one play and you take five minutes to teach it, which is, you know, kind of, you know, this is a good time, five minutes to teach the play, and then you run it you know, five times in practice, you've probably taken up 10 minutes of practice time, a very limited practice time, unless you're just wasting time out there. Um, And and, and then you're not going to run it. And that's terrible. That's the worst thing that can happen to me. So work backwards and and look at it and go, I got 60 snaps or whatever it comes out to you. You know, if you're a freshman ball and they play shorter quarters, you don't have 60 snaps. Or if you're youth and it's eight minute quarters, you don't have 60 snaps. You got 40. Um, or if you're a hurry up, no huddle, and you got 90 snaps, that's great. Start from 90. The funny thing is the hurry up, no huddle guys, they have less plays than anybody. <laughs> like, they don't like, have time to think about it. It's, it's like, just NASCAR, right, baby, right? You yeah, got five right, plays. Right. Hey, I got hey, play one. All right, let's go. <laughs> um, like, they don't have time to think about it. They got 12 seconds. They're not out there making calls and checks and motions and, and just run the play. Um, but, and they run less plays than anybody. At least they got that figured out. Um, and so we work backwards from that. And so we work backwards from it, 15 to 20 carries, I think is a, for, for a good, you know, hand, hand the ball 15 to 20 times. Um, you're, you know, and, and I'm factoring in, Hey, I've got another back who I want to get five touches in that, in that respect. Um, and you know, maybe that's just keeping guys happy, whatever. Um, of course, I like to run some some read stuff and some quarterback runs with the quarterbacks that we have right now. The last couple of years, um, five years ago, I would not have run that quarterback for a million dollars, not because he couldn't run, but because he was 145 pounds and he was too good a passer. Uh, I could not like I didn't want him to get hit ever. Luckily, he only got hit six times the whole year, and that was six times too many. Other than sneaks, um, and then you, yeah, you've got to factor that in too, right? Okay, out of those 60 snaps, I, hey, twice I've got to sneak the ball. All right, that's two snaps off. Uh, I'm going to no play one time, two times, five times if you're really undisciplined. And, you know, I'm going to do that. Um, I, you know, all these types of things you've got to take into consideration to where, okay, 15 to 20 runs. All right. Now I've got, let's, let's say 20 times. I got 40 snaps left. All right. Let's take five off for all the random stuff for, cause you know, then you got sneaks and maybe a couple draws and whatever. Uh, that don't involve him that much. He can he can be involved in draws, Q draws, quarterback draws if you run the quarterback. Um, all right, five play actions. That's conservative, uh, but five play actions. He's going to fake the ball really good. Um, oh, and then I gave the ball to the other running back five times. So, but let's say fifteen to five. Uh, five play actions. So now we're down to 30, 30 snaps left. Um, now in a in an ideal world. Uh, some percentage of those are going to be um, passes, you know, because we're going to be fairly balanced. But, you know, might be a couple screens, 
it might be uh you know with some drop back passes and, and that kind of stuff but that's kind of how the distribution is going to go and, and you you don't know because you're going to run what works like if they don't stop him running power then he's going to run power and and then he'll run it three times and another kid will go in there and run it once and he'll go in there and run it three more times screw it like so i you know I would look to call plays that directly get him the ball, handing him the ball or screens or an R flare or something like that. Let's say 20 to 25 times. Um, somebody else directly getting the ball, um, you know, our H back stuff, you know, H back gets five carries, uh, a couple jet sweeps to the Z well, you know, depending on how much you run your quarterback, that's going to be a massive factor. And you know, how much, how much everybody else is going to get the ball. So, and that puts you, you know, in the in the fifty-five to sixty percent run play range, which is where we we tend to run. And then, in the passing game, he is not in the sixties routes. Like in in the quick game, he's just not a part of it. He is a part of we we do some some um, stick, you know, read stick where where the you know you have a go on the outside, uh, a stick by the inside receiver and a flare by the back. He is a read in that. We've done some of that where he's directly involved in the passing game. That is designed to get him the ball, potentially. Um, that's probably more so than just a regular flare. That's that's how we run that to get him the ball more often. Um, My favorite way, if he's a really capable receiver, my favorite way to get him involved. Uh, and, and sorry, let me back up into our 50 series, drop back passes. He is usually the hook on curl. Uh, he has a, a shoot on some on a, a, some other concepts, but a lot of times he's running a hook route in the middle. Um, and he will only get the ball if they are fast dropping. If the linebackers are really dropping hard to the curl area, uh, he'll get the ball on those. It's really hard to get him out in that, and we struggle with that a lot. Um, so he does not get the ball a lot in our base passing game. He doesn't get the ball at all in our quick game. Um, I like, so with two things, you mentioned getting him the ball off of a, off of a play action fake. Favorite way to do that is to fake him and run our counters, counter, uh, counter pass bootleg. So we'll fake like a 25, like a, like a power look. It's called our counter pass, but it's going to look like power to the left. We're going to boot to the right or we'll fake a toss to the left and then boot to the right and look for them to not pay attention to. Cause a lot of times teams after he fakes and he doesn't get the ball, they all go. Phew. That's yeah. when we'll call the rail, come back and he'll just turn up like a wheel and throwing the ball back to the other side. That's a once every five games type of pass play, but that's a big hitter. Um, and that's, that's probably our best big shot with him. The other way that I'll get him involved, um, and my favorite pass concept for is is fifty fifty one, which is smash, line up and empty. Um, in smash, it only works in seven on seven, by the way, because there's no lineman. He goes straight down the middle of the field, and if you're too high, he catches the ball because your Mike linebacker's got to carry him. It's a great seven on seven play. It doesn't work in games very much because it's pretty hard for him to get just a clean release through all that. So we go empty and run him down the middle of the field and then run smash concept with the outside guys. He's the number three guy on the empty set. I like that. Um, we've done some things where we we go empty and put him in like a quads diamond and throw him a bubble. You know, those are simple things. Um, you can fast motion him out if you want to beat that Mike linebacker out, fast motion him. Uh, so that you know you start out with him there. This works more in gun type stuff, but uh, you know, ready, set, and he takes off running lateral so that it's just motion and then go and then throw it before the Mike linebacker can chase him. Just to get him a head start. You can throw a flare that way. Right. Um, I think it's all the ways I could think of to get him the ball, all the ways that I've used. It's probably something I'm missing, but. Um, I, I wanted to talk a minute for about decoy because you're talking about the fake and selling the fake. Um, I can remember playing teams that they put their stud regardless of position, but many times it was the running back on the back side of a trips. So he's the solo dude because you're mm -hmm. going to double him. And so not necessarily his touches, but using him in your game plan to make you better. You're still featuring him because you're going to draw two or three people to that side. Um, 
So just finding that decoy route or the decoy way to pull and, and the play action is another amazing way to do that, right? You, he's selling it hard. They've got to commit because as soon as they don't, he's breaking them off. You don't uh, have time to consider whether or not he's got the ball because he's too right. Strong. Yeah, exactly. Um, that brings up another. So, so there is another way. You mentioned the decoy. I'll go the opposite. Bobcat, our single wing. I was going to bring up Snap, Bobcat. Direct but... snapped him. And let him, and then run your run your whole package with him, just catching it and going, and take out everything else. It's going to hit a little. Joe had a. Was that a party foul? What? Did you just throw your drink across the room? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so look, I have. So I'll just tell you guys that I spend uh, an inordinate amount of time in my office chair. And so the last time that I needed an office, the, the, the like fifth one that I ever placed, I was like, all right, screw this. I got a, a Herman Miller. He's pronounced Herman Mueller or something like that. Um, I got the, the, the big money office chair planning to have it. It has a 12 year warranty. And I'm like, this is gonna be my office chair forever. And uh, or 12 years. Now it's under warranty for 12 Did you break years. your 12 year warranty. This is evidence right now. Herman, it's, but, it's, there. but it, it's, it's cracked on the thing. And so I keep having to stick it in there and then like, it comes back out, but I, I, I started to feel myself going and I'm like, all right, so I got to get down here before I. All right. So beyond chair problems. Go years ago on an episode of the football coaching podcast. Which is what you're listening to, if you were confused. Interviewed Matt Brophy, who was, uh, had a blog, Cripes something. And Brophy was very popular on Coach Huey. I don't know if he's, I don't, I don't know stuff. Um, very entertaining guy, very fun to talk to. Um, this was long, long, long ago. This was in the first year of the podcast. Um, you know, he's kind of an internet coach celebrity. Because and he was a, a big four two five or nickel. He called it nickel, um, and I would still get people argue with me. It's the nickel defense. I'm like, cool, whatever. I don't, don't care. Um, but he was on the podcast, and uh, at the time we just recorded them. There was no Zoom. You know, we were just recording them over the phone or over a whatever right. Skype, I think. And um, he fell out of his chair. One of the funny, I think I edited it out of that episode. You can probably search it on the site and search for, for Brophy and B R O P H Y. Uh, but you would have to listen to that whole episode, and, and God knows it's probably not very good. Uh, not because of him, because of me. He fell, and I think I edited it out of the main show, but then put it in as like a blooper at the end, thinking that I was like a really good editor. But that was uh, for some, you know, 700 episodes. I remember that one. Um, and I remember him falling on this chair. <laughs> Um, back to featuring our, our big guy, um, or small guy, but yeah, I, yeah. Our, our, star, really good guy. our star running back. I've thought of it twice now. I forgot it. All right. We got a All lot right. of, we got a lot of ideas here. We did. All right. So by the way, almost every single one of them is in, um, in, uh, the pistol power offense system. I think everything we've talked about is in some way running there some way or another or we can help you put it together yes and run it all right so we've talked about many many ways um to use your star back in your offense in the pro style offense specifically some of you are not running the pro style offense and your episode is coming eventually um yes. we will talk about the others well we're gonna talk about the spread and we'll think about you guys that are torturing your soul your, your players and making them run flex bone but uh, yeah. It's all the all the all the wing bone guys and the wings and things guys. Wings and things. Love wings it. and things. I don't know. I don't know how to help you. Your offense sucks. <laughs> anyway, we've got to defend. We've got to defend. Like, oh, I mean, like the first both scrimmages, and then like we got a wing tee first scrimmage. We got a double wing second scrimmage. Um, we've got a wing T first game. We've got a, are you going to forget it? If I, um, I got it. Just, okay, go. All right. The other way to help feature 
this dude, and, and, and I'm mainly talking about now just maximizing the potential of all of his touches, is just the motion game. Mm-hmm. Tying him back to, we talked jet sweep earlier, like if you have the scat back old school style, maybe he's just a Z or an S or whatever you're calling your slot, and he gets to come over and carry. So use that, uh, that window dressing, dress it up. So that way, your guy who's an absolute stud, who's really great at power, like Joe said earlier, he's gaining, you know, four or five. You can keep running power, but now I have made the defense, you know, they're kind of sitting on their heels with all of our motions, with our changes, swaps, bumps, hops, hips, um, x-rays, whatever you're calling them all. And then truly my guy is still just running his bread and butter play. He's running. Maybe he's oh. inside zone guy. Maybe he's an outside zone, my, whatever it is. My favorite inside zone is off of the rocket toss to the H back. And, you know, we always joked about that play, especially when it was good. Um, when it was at its best, I should say, we had a really dynamic H, but you, you knew that you were going to run that play once and catch him. Right. And go for 65. Yeah. And the second time that you ran the rocket toss, you were getting hit in the backfield because eight guys, maybe the second, maybe the third, whatever, it depends how shifty he is. But at some point, eight guys are running at that rocket toss motion. We call it rocket, which is it's H, H toss for us. And um, 38, 39. And the, but you knew that he was going to get hit in the backfield for minus four. And you knew that you were going to come off of that and run inside zone, cut back 65. 65 yards so it was like all right we're gonna go for 70 minus 5 60 like and we're just gonna have to live with the minus five you hope that he would kind of like be shifty and make it a no gain and you know but that nothing opened up inside zone like that rocket motion nothing get him to catch the, fl- the shiny thing one time right oh, especially if they shut motions. it down because now they're like oh we got it i always i always jet sweep I believe this since the first time that we installed Jet Sweep years and years ago. And we thought, like, this is the thing. This is back when Jet Sweep was – Mark Speckman was doing the fly faster than the fly videos and stuff, and, and it's fantastic. And, 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 you know, we go to install it, and I'm like, oh, Jet Sweep's the play. This is the play. And then I learned. Now, some teams, Mark Speckman, you know, at the time, probably ran Jet Sweep better than better than we were doing. And, and I can promise you that 15 years ago, me was not running it very well. Uh or, or whatever we were doing. But I can say this. What I found out immediately was, no matter how piss poor you run the jet, everything else gets better. Yeah. Everything. They've got to if adjust. You run the jet once, then you just run crap behind it. They've got to adjust once. They have to adjust. They have to. Yeah. And then... And then you get the same uh, thing. The jet guy goes, you you fake the jet, and everybody goes, oh, he doesn't have the ball, and then he's wide open. Yeah. On cover. Beautiful. Beautiful. Like there's so much, there's so much utility in that play uh, that has nothing to do with your. I mean, it has to do with opening up your running back. But there's so much utility in that play or in a, in an orbit motion type of toss play. Um, like, and that's what I always get. And, and 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 I'm wrong in this often, but you've got to scout it. I'm wrong in that often. Come on. I I am because I give other coaches too much credit. You know that. I look at it and I go, this is what I would do. And like we like we talked about earlier, we give coaches too much credit. We think that everybody understands run fits. We think that everybody understands because because we talk about it constantly, and and six thousand programs. And I'm constantly teaching, and I'm constantly working, and I'm constantly. Everybody doesn't get. Coaches tell me, well, hey, when you know, when we um, and they'll say it so matter of factly when they run the jet motion. How do you rotate your safeties? I don't. I ignore it because the jet's going to run directly into my overhang safety. Right. The guy who's already supposed to be there. (laughs) He's already there. And then the free, I mean, the free safety could walk down a step or two, because I know that most likely if you run anything, it's going to be like a flood concept to the jet side. But if I rotate my safeties, I have no force player. And you still have a regular old three by one look, or maybe you're even jetting from three by one, to two by two. So if you rotate your safeties, uh, that's what they that's what I want. I want that CBR guy to be backing up. Yeah, please rotate. So I I encourage our coach. I say I, I don't. 
if you watch film and it's 100% and they have no counter, first of all, don't worry about it because you're going to win. Second of all, because you have like thought process going into your system and they just run a jet play. They just run a play. If every time that guy goes in motion, he runs the jet, it's just a play to them. And there's no thought of setup. Um, even if every time he does it, they go straight up the middle. It's just a play to them. If they don't have anything that attacks backside because you rotate, like, I, ooh, ooh, okay. Um, but I, I give too much credit because I'm like, you can't do that because. And then I have to catch myself and say, well, watch the film. If they don't have anything to threaten you, then you can rotate the safety, and this is how I'd rotate the safety. Yeah. But have they just not shown it yet? Dun, dun, dun. Now they have a counter. Well, everybody else is rotating the safety. So (laughs) watch the film. Is everybody else rotating the safety and it's killing them? Then rotate the safety. Be willing to give up. You know, don't chase ghosts. Don't give them more credit. That's that's one of the biggest lessons that I'm I've learned. Don't give them more credit than they deserve. They haven't shown the they they if they look like coaches who have a stack of plays, they probably are. They're not thinking constraints and all that kind of stuff. Containers. Um, containers. So basically what we've, we brought to you tonight was if you've got a star running back, there aren't fancy things to do. It's just about maximizing the potential of every one of his touches. You don't got to hand it to him 60 times in the pro system. You need to throw the ball to help open up his 30 touches or his 20 touches. You need to dress it up a little bit. You've got to get the defense confused. You have the ability to do that. You can go ahead. Go ahead. You go can ahead. still chain. You can still decoy him. You can still work the screen game. You can you. You've just need the, more than anything. We're trying to draw the attention away from him so that he can just do what he does great, which is put one foot in the ground, make everyone look stupid. Um, And then if they're just going to commit to him anyway, if you're going to get an eight-man box and they're going to triple-team him everywhere he goes, then featuring your star running back is throwing the ball to other people and letting them score touchdowns. Yeah, and give it to them enough so that they don't think they can leave them. One of the things to not neglect, and this happens because you run these – you go – I try to stress this. This year I'm going to have two outside backers – who are third-year starters who are at any given time going to be two of the best players on the field. And I've coached them for three years. Uh, They were safeties before. Um, And having to explain to them, you're not getting coached like the year before or the year before that when you were a sophomore. Because if I just coached for the results that you got as a sophomore, I wouldn't need to be here. Right you need to play at a level of the best players on the field. And that means there's no, oh, well, I made the play. I had to, this one, you know, one of them made a fantastic play, but he was the force. And in his, his initial fit, he hit the inside of the wing back. And then he scraped off of him, chucked him away, and, and, and strung it out all the way down the line of scrimmage to the sideline. It's a beautiful play. But his initial aiming point was wrong. And we can't allow that. With a great running back, you will be tempted to just hand him the ball and watch it work. And you'll play some middling teams and some bad teams, and it will work. Make your run plays great by focusing on the timing. He is the strong point. The weak point is probably at least one or two of your offensive line, if not your offensive line as a whole. By setting up the timing so that the offensive line needs to stay engaged in the block, the short, what's the best way to stop a running back like this? It's to get to him before he gets going. So if I can set my timing in the backfield up so that my offensive linemen just need to take the right first two steps and cover up those guys so that they cannot get a lick on him before he gets going, you will maximize his ability. So in order to maximize, like we've talked a lot of play calling and stuff, in order to maximize his ability, spend a great amount of time on the timing of the play. And that means adjusting his depth, his footwork, making sure that the center snap is consistent so that you have consistent timing, spending lots of time on the quarterback running back exchange so that when he gets the ball, 
you are minimizing the amount of time that the weak links, your fourth, fifth offensive linemen, have to stay engaged in the block. And that way they don't get to him before he gets going. And we know that once he gets going, he's the best on the field. Yeah. So do not neglect that. Excellent. That's a very good point. All right, man. We have literally this time checked all the boxes. Yep. This is a good thorough or bringing out of, oh God, there's an or. Oh, there's always more. <laughs> there's always more. Toss <laughs> pass. I was about to say, now he's got an arm. Now he's got to throw. Right. Now he's got to throw. <laughs> Booby Miles can run. Booby yeah. Miles can throw. <laughs> he can toss juke. Pass. He can spin. Don't leave Bo- toss pass out. Booby Miles can even throw. Um, which brings us back to paying the bills, which means get him in a sports performance system to help him prevent injury so you can use him all season, like going to Dr. Samantha Chamberlain Adaptive Physical Therapy in Grove, Oklahoma. Fly him in. I'm fine. I mean, I'm not paying for it, but by all means, bring him on. Uh, but really, uh, joinanualfootball.com. We've, we started this evening talking about systems, and there's nothing better. There's nothing that's going to help create opportunity for any of your players to, to show up th- than a system. You can't go out with a stack of plays. And t- Look, I laugh at Jimbo Fisher and his... 200 million plays he carries on the sideline, okay? Your system ain't got to be that ridiculous, okay? Put in power and running out of 45 formations, that's fine, but Lord have mercy. Anyway, get you a system. JoeDanielFootball.com is an amazing system, okay? It will fit all defensively, run whatever you want. If you want to be 3-4 this year because that's the, your, your personnel, that's great. You're not changing anything from year to year except for like one dude's alignment. And you got to change some assignments on a couple guys. Your force may move around a little bit, but the kids can pick it up because they've been trained in the system year after year after year after year. Uh, join.joinandfootball.com. You get access for a buck today. Okay. What is, I think it's still seven days of, of access, and that's unlimited. There's not, you can look through a whole system. You can go in there and find everything you want about whatever your system is. You're putting in three, four, you're doing it. Uh, you know my you know, stuff, you jackals jackals don't send in that survey when you play if you plan to cancel in seven days because i spend a lot of time on those because he waste loves my time. you waste my time i don't care if you i don't i don't care if you decide to cancel because you you looked it over and you listened to me and you decided we didn't weren't a good fit i don't have a problem with that at all but if you came in expecting me to do that just don't fill out this go ahead and do it whatever jackal jack your jackal and uh don't send in that survey and waste my time no you're not you're not an iguana not an iguana uh it comes with a four three four two five three three stack and three four systems, um, all in one. Like, like I said, and 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 the verbiage stays the same. And kids just have an understanding. Pistol power offense system is also in there. You can run if you want to be pro. You want to run a. You have a star running back, and you're trying to feature him in your pro style offense. Then uh, the pistol power offense is for you. It's not just pistol. It's not just power. However, I think those would work pretty good with a a, a star running back in this case. They do. That was what we did with the best one I had. There you go. You can spread, you can empty, you can pack it in tight and run with a fullback and, and two tight ends and a wing and do whatever you want to do. You can wings and things. All of that happens in the Pistol Power Office system. Chalk Bowl Forums, uh, Chalk Talks bi-weekly. Excuse me. They're weekly now. We're in season. Yeah. We're weekly now. Every Monday-ish oh, night. I got, how dare you? Every single week. Every week. It is Every in week. season. It is in season. Officially. Um, and then of course game film now. So if you want to go platinum, I think that it's 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 one of the best features of 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 Joe Daniel football. Unless you're a brand new coach and then it's almost useless to you. But well, if you're a position coach, then maybe it is, but you can come in and get a one hell of an education as a coach. Ten years of education in one year is what I think. The, but, the platinum you know, might be. The gold is not. There you go. If, yeah, if you're a position coach, I will absolutely I like I've worked with a lot of position coaches. You know what I love? I've been working with some uh, older position coaches who are like in their retirement gig, kind of like I am, like, you know, Look being a you. position coach. You're in but, your uh, retirement gig. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, but you're a position coach and you've been used to being in charge. Um, and we've, we've, uh, many of us have taken that step back here and there. And it's like, I'm like one of the things that I always recommend to them is like, go on the chalkboard forum. Because one of the things that makes me feel good is like, I have all these recommendations, but I can't, 
you know, I can't just go in and make all these changes, but I can go on the chalkboard forum and unload with all my ideas. Right. <laughs> I love it. That's where I can just, just indiscriminately throw my ideas out there and, if you don't listen you to them, to. I don't have to watch you do something else at least. That's right. You have to read it or, or else. 